the Cardiff Devils at the Motor Point Arena for the final time of this season. The Steelers, well, we entrusted the help of Spider-Man. And of course, Steeler Dan was doing the Harlem Shake. Jeff Woolhouse wasn't doing the Harlem Shake. He was very focused. He got the start ahead of John DeCaro, who started the game against the Blaze on Saturday. So House in goal and the Sheffield Steelers on an early power play. Gimblet went for interference at just 26 seconds. Former Cardiff Devils man Tyler Michelle weaved his magic and an individual goal of the highest quality. He went five hole on Whiteley and the Sheffield Steelers led by a goal to nil. 24th goal of the season for Tyler Michelle. Jim Jorgensen and Ashley Tate picked up an assist on the first of four power play goals in five attempts for the Sheffield Steelers. Super slow-mo shows through the feet of Richardson and Adams through the five hole of Whiteley. The Steelers led by a goal to nil. It was a teddy bear toss as well. The teddy bears came down, our volunteers did a fantastic job clearing the ice as quickly as possible and we were soon back to action. Ashley Tate was off for tripping, Mark Richardson shoots and scores on the power play. Blight and McRae picking up assists at 7.54, we were tied at one apiece. Nice finish goes over the glove of Jeff Woolhouse and Richardson ties it. On the super slow-mo you can see that wheezes past Jeff Woolhouse, 1-1. 27 seconds though was all it took the Sheffield Steelers to uh, go back into the lead. Jeff Legree from close range, he's 33rd of the year as well for Leggy. Another blockbusting season from the Steelers number 11. Sarich and Ferguson picking up assists on Legree's 33rd goal. Just gets there ahead of the defenceman. You can see the frustration in the defenceman, but Legree is just so quick. And the Steelers led by 2-1. Penalty coming up on the Sheffield Steelers, Tyler Michel, he'd go for interference, I think he's a little bit unlucky here, tries to get out of the way, Whiteley comes in his way, and Andy Carson right on the spot calls an interference minor. Michel goes off at 12-16. Jonathan Phillips was already off the ice, five on three power play for the Cardiff Devils, could they tie it at two apiece? Well at 12-34 they did just that, Big Max Prabea shoots and scores, the Devils were tied at 2-2. House gets across as quick as he can, but he's down. Rabia sees him down and he goes upstairs. Simple finish from Big Max, we're tied at two. Gimblet was off again, this time for elbows. Another power play opportunity for the Steelers, and they would extend their lead. 16-29 when Sean Limpright would find the net. Limpright was involved in the build-up as well as the finish. Here he is on the puck now. Takes the shot, the rebound's going to pop out, he picks it up, and he fires past Whiteley, the Steelers led 3-2. 20th of the season for Sean Limbright, he hits the magic 20 mark as well. A lovely finish as well. You'll see on the super slow mode, the puck gets back down, once or twice. Look at Limbright though, searching, finds it, brings it out, and then finishes nicely. Whoosh, it was behind you. Steelers started the uh, second period on the power play and Ashley Tate was to hit the 20 mark as well. Ferguson and Jorgensen would combine in Tate's power play goal. As I say, four for five on the power play. Impressive records from the Sheffield Steelers. Ashley Tate shoots and scores. Everybody was happy. Even Ash was happy. Picks up on that loose puck. How many times have we seen Ashley Tate score from that area? He seems to just attract the puck. A little deflection there from Ferguson created the rebound. What? We can do nothing about it. And here comes Ash. Simple finish for his 20th of the year. Even the Brownies were happy. Oh, they made some noise, the Brownies. Oh, did they ever. Scoring wasn't over, though. Still in the second period. McRae, who was involved in everything that was good for the Cardiff Devils, sets up Harding, and he shoots past Woolhouse to make it 4-3 at 36.07. Good amount of travelling Devil supporters as well made the trip. But it was a win for Jeff Woolhouse. Two wins in two weekends against the Cardiff Devils for House. And that meant it was a pretty happy coach, Ryan Finnerty, that spoke with us afterwards in the sponsors' lounge in front of 150 guests.
First of all, coach, uh, a good win on a four-point weekend just on the uh, eve of that Challenge Cup final. Yeah, I think we we will liked it to be a bit more convincing tonight. I thought we, I think we wanted a better result, but you know, like I said, we'll we'll take uh, we'll take the four three win, and, and better yet, we'll take no injuries heading into Wednesday. But uh, we played well yesterday, and I, I thought we would we would take that into today. And we, we played well in spurts. Obviously, a lot of penalties and uh, frustrated with our discipline in the first period. But um, you know, we played we played good at, at times. But I, I thought we we could have played better. But. You know, at this point of the year, it's it's uh, guys. I know the guys' focus is on Wednesday and, and obviously playoffs. Okay, just tell us through the uh, the decision. DeCaro Woolhouse. Uh, DeCaro played last night. Played very well in uh, Coventry, and you went with the house tonight. Yeah, I thought. Uh, I mean, we we've, we've been wanting to get Jeff in the in the uh, in the lineup a lot more than we have, and and Jeff understands the situation. And, and I thought tonight was a, a good area to for one to get Jeff in there, and, and two give Johnny a bit of a rest heading into Wednesday because. Um, you know, we got a lot of hockey coming up in a short period of time, so we uh, we may see House again next weekend. We'll uh, we'll we'll address that after after Wednesday. But I thought he did a great job as he always does. He's a big part of our team, and and uh, you know he he fully deserves to to probably play more. And and the way the year's gone, it's been tough to spot him in. So it was good to finally get him in tonight. Sunday night, take us through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday up to seven thirty. What you have to do as a coach to uh, get your team ready to go for the biggest game of the year by a country mile. Yeah, I think uh, the boys will they'll rest up tomorrow, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll arrive here uh, Tuesday morning, and uh, the coaching staff will be doing video breakdown, and we'll have a good skate uh, in the morning, and then uh, some meetings in, in the afternoon, and and any you know a little, little tidbits you got to knock off before Wednesday, and usually come Wednesday, uh, all the talking's done, and the and then the preparation's done, and you know the guys just need to prepare for the game, and. And it's uh, it's going to be an exciting time, you know. I think uh, the boys have been looking forward to it for a while, and you can tell they've been looking past games. And, and obviously, the league campaign has fallen short. And I think guys have, have focused and set their sights. So I'm hoping they we come with it and play with a ton of energy and, and uh, some passion come Wednesday. Passion is what's required here, isn't it? On, on Wednesday night, they're coming into our building as league champions. Something that we're not happy about as a, as a hockey club, and uh, it's a great chance to Jonathan Phillips used the word redemption, but to to certainly certainly set the record straight because we have played well against them at times this year. Yeah, like I said, we've we got a winning record against them. Uh, and, and here we've, we've, uh, we've dominated most games. I mean, and, uh, you know, we're, we're confident playing them. We, uh, we play well against them. I think we've, we've been in every game. You know, the last two haven't gone our way in Nottingham, but I think uh, here in front of our fans and, and with the, you know, the, the support we're going to have come Wednesday, I think the guys will feed off that. And, and I think it's going to be a good game. And, and we, you know, it's a 120-minute game, and that's what we have to reiterate. It's not a 60-minute game. So you uh, you got to be focused for the whole game because any goal can, can shift the momentum. Any goal can, can change the outcome. So uh, it, it's going to be a battle, but I think we're, we're looking forward to it, and we've been, we've been preparing for it uh, yeah, for some time now. And, you know, hopefully those guys are still celebrating, patting each other on the back, and, and come in Wednesday and uh, take us a bit lightly. That's what we're hoping for. A good victory over Cardiff. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, I think they're a great team to play because they, they, they're they short on numbers, they got nothing to lose, and they just come at you. Uh, they got one top line who are uh, very dangerous with space uh, on, on the puck. But, um, no, I think they were a good, good team to play. It kind of kept us on our toes, um, you know, just gave us enough time just to, you know, put our systems into place and get them corrected for, um, for Wednesday. Ash, congratulations. Four-point weekend and uh, another convincing victory here against Cardiff. Yeah, I think um, it's, right now it's all about momentum and just good habits and kind of getting ready for Wednesday night. And, um, you know, two wins um, is a, you know, can't ask for any more. Scoring in both games as well. You go into that challenge, got final yourself in very good form. Yeah, I mean, it, I kind of went six or seven on the bounce, didn't even get a point for a little while. And it's nice to kind of find the back of the net and, um, you know, just, just it becomes kind of habit. Just kind of find the right areas and you get the bounces and hopefully that will continue. From the outside, it looks that we've got three balanced lines now. You've played with Huey and Jonathan for, for so long. That that line seems to click. Is is that how you see it with inside the room? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, we, that you kind of want you like you said three balanced lines. You you want everybody to kind of have offensive output and be good defensively. And I think we've kind of found that balance in the last couple of weeks. So we're you, um, you're going to need that against Nottingham because that's their key, isn't it? Three great lines that they come into here with on Wednesday. And we're going to need everybody playing out there ultimate, aren't we? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I said to Hugh and John, I come into the third period tonight, we, we, whatever we do, we don't get scored on. And, and we had some good offensive chances. So we, um, you know, as long as we can maintain that, be good defensively and the chances will come. How do you see this series? It's as big as it gets, isn't it? Especially with them winning the league, this series now takes on a whole new meaning. Yeah, I mean, 
obviously Nottingham Sheffield doesn't really need any explaining. Um, we're at home. We know we need to come out, play with energy, be intense, and uh, you know really kind of take it to them. And it, it's difficult because you've got to remember it's six periods, and um, you, you know you win the first one. It's not you're only halfway there, so we um, you know it's going to be intense. Um, and, and again, we're kind of taking that. And we're leading into the last weekend and also the playoffs, so we've got that at the back of our heads as well.